Welcome to the Bumblecast, everyone. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King. And in a world of ordinary co-hosts, I am joined by Wonder Kyle Krause. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> the topic of the show is I Wonder know. Woman. I, I understand. I and the know. slogan was, so... It's the thing I do where I try to do something witty and Ah, okay, okay. It was witty. It was... I, I I I just like to pregnant pause because I'm a jerk and I like to leave you I like to leave people hanging. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I am on the mend. <clears throat> uh right after we recorded our last show, it was my birthday. And for my birthday, I decided to treat myself to back problems. Oh, everyone's favorite. Oh, yeah. Really messed up my left hip and lower back. So went to my wife's chiropractor, Quasimodo style. (laughs) And really nice guy. Uh Um, Very hands-on, as most chiropractors are. But a bump bump. Ooh. And within under a week, well, no, we'll say just maybe a little over a week, I am back to almost normal mobility, which for me is, you know, really impressive because I'm not all that mobile anyway. (laughs) You are back. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. No, you did it first. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, just with some twisting and smooshing and some twice a day stretches, I am in much better shape. I could actually walk in a straight line at a brisk pace. So, wow. That's nice. Is this is this an improvement from even before you messed up your back? Uh, or... we're almost on par, almost on par. Okay, okay. That's what I, I was wondering. I'm like, Wait, are you have you just been having back pain problems this whole time? Well, I did something to my back back in middle school. Ah. And did not follow what the doctor told me to do <laughs> back then. You, 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 so, middle schoolers never listen to doctors. Eh, but um, <laughs> it flares up every now and again. And usually I can take, you know, an Advil or something, take it easy for a couple of days, and it'll work itself out. Sure. But uh, I'm going to be at Heroes Con down in Charlotte, North Carolina, and driving 14 hours on a really bad flare up. Standing at a table for seven hours at a time uh-uh, was not going to fly. Mm-hmm. So went to see the doctor, and uh, thankfully, apparently, I am making remarkable progress. That's good. Uh, yeah, so I'm in, I wouldn't say fighting shape, but I'm in con going shape, at least. We'll put it that way. Con- okay. <laughs> no, No fights for you, but... I mean, you can come at me. It's your mistake, you know. Okay. Just say it. Okay. Well, you'll be at a con. Maybe anybody who wants to meet up there, who wants to throw down, can not. <laughs> hey, you throw five dollars my way, I'll swing up. I'll swing at you. Whatever. I ain't proud. <laughs> Would you let them swing at you for five bucks? <laughs> uh, it depends on the size of the person. <laughs> Okay. If they're like most folks I've met the show, yeah, sure, five, whatever. <laughs> if you're like a, a colleague of mine who used to work on the books a long time back, told the story of how he, one of the first shows he did while working on the Sonic books, he was confronted by this huge, burly, muscular, angry looking construction worker who was very, very mad that Sonic and Sally were not official and was ready to drag this dude for around the table and fight him right there in the aisles. So that guy, he's going to have to pay a little bit more, but you know, as long as I can get back to Canada where the healthcare is free. Sure. Why not? <laughs> New Bumble King, Bumble cast Patreon incentive. If you want to take a swing at me, we'll just add that to the sidebar. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to slug me in the face? Do you think I'm a pompous jerk? Well, guess what? Patreon has opened the door to you. That's right. You too can take a swing at Ian Flynn for just a paltry sum. <laughs> to be determined. 
<laughs> so that was my exciting ah. life lately. What have you been up to? Well, lately, because uh, I've actually had this, I've had this book on my uh, stack of to read books for a while, and uh, seeing the Wonder Woman movie, which we're going to be talking about very soon, uh, put me in the mood to read some Wonder Woman comics. So I picked up my, I finally picked up, cracked open my uh, copy of Legend of Wonder Woman by uh, Renee De Liz and uh, Ray Dillon. And I must say, it's a dang good book. I have heard nothing but good things about it. It's very good. The art is uh, delightful. It looks really good. The characterization of uh, Diana is <laughs> like, strikingly similar to the film. I don't know what's going on here. I've heard there's a lot of parallels, there's, but we'll get to there, that. There are book. definitely some certain parallels. It's not the same, but there are definitely some things where it's like, huh, I wonder if they kind of kind of looked at this book a little bit. But yeah, it's a really good, it's a retelling of uh, Wonder Woman's origin story. Uh, it does take place during World War II, so it's a little bit more uh, closer to the original origin in that sense. But uh yeah, it's just a really solid book. So I've been reading that for the last couple nights. I'm a little over halfway through it. It's a pretty, it's a pretty sizable book for a uh, for a trade. So and it's hardcover. So it's a very pretty book. Highly recommend it. Well, speaking of comic books, let's give one away on the Bumble Raffle. Let's do it. Bumble Raffle is a show uh, contest we do on every show. <laughs> You'd think I would have that in order by now. Nah. Where uh, you get a free autographed book from yours truly. Uh, if you are a patron over at patreon.com backslash bumblecast, you get entered into every single drawing automatically. Otherwise, just write in for every show to our email address, bumblecast at yahoo.com. Everybody's got the same chances. It's just the patrons get to be automatically entered. Now, here's the thing with the drawing. This is our last book that we have in stock, technically. I say technically because I have one extra that's due to somebody else, but we've had a few winners who just haven't gotten back to us. So we've reached out to them, maybe not promptly, but, you know, we've gotten, we've made the effort to say, hey, you won, let us know where you want the book. And if we don't hear back from you, we've, we have a limited stock and, you know, the show keeps going. So we've got to send this stuff out. So... We'll see what happens by the time of the next show. So this could be the last book. It could be the next to last book. We'll just see. So anyway, this show's winner is... Clinton H. Congratulations, Clinton. We will get in touch with you and find out where we're sending that book off to. A newcomer to the Patreon. Welcome aboard, yeah. sir. Hope you uh, enjoy that comic. Admire it. Love it. Cherish it like you would cherish your own child. <laughs> As if I wrote my name on it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I haven't signed any babies yet. I have signed people, but not babies. <laughs> uh, well, it might be a good thing. <laughs> Probably, but I just give it a matter of time. Yeah, uh, well. Just so you know, as we get into it, we're going to be spoilerific. Yes. So if you've not seen Wonder Woman yet, go ahead and skip to the Q&A. Uh, unless you want to be spoiled, in which case, you know, listen on. I would say this is probably one to go ahead and see in the theater. Yeah. Number one, to support, you know, the first female lead superhero movie ever. Really? I'm not counting the old Supergirl movie. That was kind of. Oh, it's, it's not. Thing. It's not good. <laughs> but... And it was riding off of the Christopher Reeve. Superman oh, oh sure. Oh, sure. It's but, not. It's not a good movie, but. You know, but it... <laughs> there's at least one battle scene that really you ought to see on the big screen if you get oh, a chance. So yeah, 
Yeah, I think so, I think you know what you're talking about. So straight up, this is spoiler territory. Last warning. Yeah. So Kyle, did you like it? Uh yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what kind of monster do you think I am? <laughs> Is this is this is this where we're going now? You think I don't like things that are good? I'm I mean, just sometimes being polite I light in giving you an intro. Come on. Okay, okay. Yes, it's, it, I enjoyed it quite a lot. How about you? <laughs> I did too. I wasn't as wowed as some people seem to be. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I quite reached that point either. But I was very. But, I was happy with it. Yeah, it, that I'm not. I feel like I need to defend the position, but really, it is a good film. Yes, it is a very entertaining film. Absolutely, it has its weak moments. Yes, but it's definitely much higher than par. Yes, like, compared to the other DC universe movies so far, it's head and shoulders above. I would no say cons. I would say that the pros handily outweigh the cons. Easy. The easy, cons easy. are there, but they are there's really not any the they don't weigh down on the pros in any real way for the most part. And it definitely outdoes a number of the Marvel movies. Yes. Which I think is a fair comparison just because they have created the genre. Mm-hmm. And while you could argue that DC and Marvel can't be compared because of blah, 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 blah. The movies are to me, the kind of base level. Are they entertaining? Do they convey the character well? And do they tell an entertaining story? And Wonder Woman succeeds in all of those. Yes. I think Gail Godot's representation of Wonder Woman is charming. And it's visceral, for lack of a better word. In a lot of action movies, the heroine, even if she is someone who's going to get into the thick of it, they usually kind of pull back on the violence. You don't really see her taking as many hits as necessarily the rest of the heroes. But she gets in there. She takes some serious hits, and she dishes it out. She is in there to break some faces. Oh, yeah. And... Oh, it's uh, the bell tower during the No Man's Land <laughs> Yes, that was cool. Oh, that was satisfying. Yes. And, she, and honestly, and she was, I, I, no, go, ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, and uh, in typical DC film universe fashion, she'll kill people. But it's <laughs> not, but it's actually justified and for a good reason. So, and she doesn't just do it indiscriminately or for just because and she's right. not just violent for violence sake she's a right. warrior she understands war <laughs> she understands that death is part of war so she fights and realizes that yeah she's gonna have to kill somebody but she does it with honor right that and she has a range of emotion that that helps a lot <laughs> and all of it feels genuine uh one of the things that Ali and I were discussing coming out of the film is when she's brought into man's world and she's experiencing all these weird and new things. It wasn't handled in your typical, oh, what is that? What is this strange moving carriage? She knew it was going to be different. She knew it was not the mascara. So it was more of a curiosity. It was an intrigue. It wasn't played like she was stupid. And that, I think, is a huge difference than a ton of other movies. Yeah. And to make a comparison, the graphic novel, uh, Legend of Wonder Woman, plays it very much the same way. Mm. Which is why I'm wondering if they did look at that comic before making this movie. <laughs> so it's like, huh, it's a very similar, uh, it's not the same, but it's a similar feel. So um, I do think a lot of it was a bit dark, a bit gray and gritty, but mm. then again... Given the setting, this is World War right. One. This is industrial era London. This is industrial it really area. For its color palette. Yeah, this is early 1900s London, and this is World War One. So, I expect it to be kind of dark and grim, but there are plenty of moments of color, and the 
overall characters are a welcome breath of fresh air from other DC movies <laughs> mm-hmm. from the other from the other ones we've had so far. And that, you know, they actually have some levity to them. They have some depth to them other than just being a one note kind of like, I'm Batman. I'm dark all the time. <laughs> I kill people because I'm Batman. What? <laughs> Martha, why did you say that name? Why did you say Martha? <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh, but geez. thankfully there was nothing like that in this movie. No, there wasn't. And we'll get to kind of an extension of that in a minute. But the big comparison that struck me mm-hmm. is I see a lot of parallels with her during the World War One setup to the first Captain America movie. Yeah, especially in the we're gaining an extended cast of racially diverse and quirky characters at a pub in wartime. But that being said, I think the supporting cast in Wonder Woman's film made a far greater lasting impression than the Howling Commandos. Like the only one I can really remember off the top of my head there is Dum Dum Dugan, and that's because he has the hat. Yeah, everyone else just kind of merges together. Honestly, couldn't tell you who the other three were in Wonder Woman's film, but I could tell you their gimmick. I could tell you, you know, what they looked like. I could tell you how they interacted, and more than just what the one note was. Oh, sure. Also, sure. with Captain America, you see a lot of the battles, but you don't see a lot of the fallout from it. With Wonder Woman, whose aspect is supposed to be, you know, a warrior who is out for peace, you see the plight of the people. You see the horror for the soldiers and you see both sides looking for peace. It isn't the Germans are one note of the Oz, the bad guys. It's, it's about people and it's not about good versus evil. And I think that is a very nuanced approach to it, which I appreciated. Yeah. I just wish they had spent maybe a tiny bit more with Diana directly struggling with that realization. Yeah, I would agree with you there. But um, one thing I really did, I really just, (laughs) that I loved about Diana's character was that she was like, for the first time in a DC movie, and probably kind of for the first time in a long time in superhero movies in general, she was just unabashedly heroic. Mm -hmm. Like at the moment in the trench, in the trenches, when they first got there and she was looking around and was like, what's going on here? And then she was getting, she was, uh, thinking like, or, um, Steve, Steve Trevor was, uh, basically trying to get her to keep moving on, keep moving on because we can keep moving. If we keep moving, we can end everything here. We can end the entire war. We just got to keep moving. And she's like, but I can help these people right now. But he but he tries to convince her to keep moving on. She's like, no, I am standing up right here right now for this. I'm going out there and I am going to help these people because I am able to and I can do it right now. So she just gets out of the trench, stands up and just goes for it. And it's it was one of the most awesome things I've seen a superhero do in a movie in probably ever. <laughs> It was a very satisfying, it's, yeah, heroic moment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I've just, it's what, I don't know. There's just something about me that, that I've always just liked Wonder Woman better than any of the other DC characters for the most part. It's just something about her where she does things like that. It's like, yes, that is what being a hero is. That's being a superhero. That's, that's what it is. It's not all, it's not all of the civil war. <laughs> it's not all this other stuff. It's about standing up and doing what's right and going out there and doing it uh and helping people regardless of anything else. And other side of that coin, I really liked how they did Hades because I was expecting You mean you mean, traditional... Ar- you mean Ares? Sorry. But, Sorry, yeah. I keep doing that. <laughs> I know my mythology, really, truly. Ares. Ares, yeah, not Hades. Hades is a different one. <laughs> Hades is sitting down there going, you missed me, sucker, I'm down here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no. Ares, there we go. Yes. I was expecting the traditional, you know, chest-thumping, swaggering, arrogant warmonger that he's been 
portrayed as in various media, but to have him be so calm and reserved and gentle in his approach, uh, how subtle it was that he manipulated Diana into reaching her goal. And the fact that he was not really the instigator is so much as the facilitator. He did not make anybody start the conflict. He gave them the tools and they did it to themselves. And I think that resonates so much more interestingly than wahaha, I've been pulling the strings all along. <laughs> and when we get to the, you know, inevitable big throwdown, he doesn't devolve into this echoey voice, dark being that just needs to be shot down. He uses a variety of tactics and he remains measured and in control. The dialogue may not have been as great in the final, you know, couple of blows, but you know, <laughs> he didn't devolve into a goofy villain. I kind of like the dialogue in the <laughs> near the end, just because I'm into cheesy comic book stuff. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I, it's all fun. <laughs> I do kind of wish that his face metamorphed because after a point, well, I liked the introduction having grandfatherly British guy. Yeah. <laughs> under the helmet was a little, it's a, it's, it's a little took away from it a little, but it's a little, you know. it's a little jarring, but it still worked. Now the two things I wanted more of out of the film, mm -hmm. aside from Di a little more time spent on Diana dealing with the world around her, I wanted more than mascara. Yes, the Amazons were freaking amazing. <laughs> they were so cool. I want to see them fighting leviathans and chimeras <laughs> and other stuff. I don't care. Just oh, they were cool. It's an island of badass stunt women. <laughs> it's basically. <laughs> Yeah, and then the, oh, and, God, and it's so freaking good, yes. And two, I wanted more Etta Candy. Ah, yeah. She is... Collectively, she maybe had ten minutes of screen time, and all of it was pure gold. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. She has a lot more uh, more appearances in uh, Legend of Wonder Woman. So, um, she plays a big part in that, but I would have liked to have seen her play more of a role in the... Uh, in the movie, that would have been really good. And I'm a little sad because it seems like this movie, as the origin story set so far in the past, looks like it might just kind of push all of those side characters aside so Wonder Woman is free to do everything in the modern day. I'm really, really hoping that if we get a Wonder Woman 2, which at this rate I can't, don't see why we wouldn't. I think it's been confirmed. Excellent. I hope we have at least some flashback sequences so we can have Diana and Edda together. You know, because I would be sad if she was lost to the passage of time. Right. Yeah. Well, she's fun. I think they, <laughs> they're the characters really, uh, they kind of bounce off of each other well. I'm so. not sure how I feel about Steve Trevor's noble sacrifice at the very end, though. It felt, <laughs> it felt, a little, it felt a little Captain America. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just because they're both named Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so you had to blow up all the gas. It sure. is weak to fire. And as he's taking off in the giant biplane, which is kind of silly, but I like it. He's looking back and there's this giant bonfire as the entire airfield goes up. And I'm like, okay, he's going to loop it around and blow it up and jump out. No, he's going to go straight up and shoot this. Okay. It felt unnecessary, I guess. Yeah. I don't and, know. It seems kind of weird. I mean, my question is, why did they do it that way? Did they want to not have to follow up on the romantic angle? Because if Diana is super old slash immortal, well, I guess she is divine. So, yeah, immortal. It could have been a poignant part of her backstory, you know? Mm -hmm. She learned to live and love as a mortal that age has passed and she's still here continuing the fight. So killing him off doesn't seem necessary in that way. I almost get the feeling like they had to do it so that he had a big hero moment, in which case that wasn't necessary. Yes. Yeah. Let's just say in the big Hades, Wonder Woman fight, Hades gets the upper hand for a moment because he's the experienced guy. She is not. He's doing his monologue as villains always do. 
and Chris a pot shot at his head. Not Chris. That's the actor's name. Do you keep calling him Chris like I keep trying to? Yeah, it's Steve. Yeah, it's Steve. It's Steve. Not Steve Rogers. <laughs> Other Steve. Not Steve Rogers. Not Chris Evans. <laughs> Takes a pot shot. Even have like the goof troop behind him shoot as well. Showing that humanity has the courage to face impossible odds for honor and friendship and love and all that jazz. They don't have to be effective. It's just the show of solidarity. And it gives Wonder Woman the half second she needs to catch her breath, get up, lasso Hades around the neck and sling him around like a sock. <laughs> that would have worked too. You didn't need to have the plane blow up, but what yeah, do I know? Yeah, we didn't necessarily have to have the noble sacrifice, but I, in terms of things that I could be like mad about, in movies that's not really a big a big yeah. thing in the grand scheme of things a dc movies especially be like <laughs> oh man if that's like the biggest problem with your movie you're doing pretty good oh yeah oh. so but yeah there's certain there's definitely criticism to be made there and i don't disagree <laughs> ranking it against other marvel films i would say i liked it better than doctor strange yeah i did too i it was much better than the thor movies yeah. I, have, I have a I have a soft place in my heart for the first one. I it's do, charming. Yeah, I like the what? first one, but although Ragnarok looks really good, so I'm I'm hopeful on that one. I like them all. I yeah. I haven't seen a Marvel movie that I haven't liked in at least some way. So it's so it's not like I have them. I'm just trying to think of like I don't have a like one that I hate. Sure. So. But in terms of just overall quality, I think it, right. I would dare say it's better than Avengers Two, with oh, out of fight. Honestly, Avenger, Avengers Two is one kind of one of the weaker ones <laughs> in my exactly. mind. At least it's like man, that that one's not that great. So sum it all up, I would say Wonder Woman is at least better than like half the Marvel movies out there. It's on par with the average good Marvel movie. Yeah, not perfect as some people seem to be saying, but definitely good. It's very good. It's, it comes highly recommended for me that you go see it in some way, shape, or form uh, after you've done listening to the show. <laughs> and furthermore, because Marvel got out of the gate first, they kind of set the standard for the genre. Mm -hmm. DC has now pulled ahead. They set the bar for what a superheroine movie should be. Mm-hmm. So Marvel better make sure that their Captain Marvel is on par or they're going to lose a lot of the momentum that they've gained at this point. I'm looking forward to Captain Marvel. I am hopeful. I do like Captain Marvel a lot. So, so but we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. see. I'm, I, I definitely want that to be good. I'm hopeful. And I also really want a Black Widow movie. So hopefully this sp <laughs> this burns Marvel to be like, okay, fine. We'll do a Black Widow movie. <laughs> eventually oh, wow. look at what dc did okay okay um money towards the women uh yes um let's see uh we can do a spy thriller that's fine <laughs> that's kind of been the thing about superhero movies they're all they've yeah they're all superhero movies but they've also um dabbled or not dabbled but explored genres within that scope so I think it would be absolutely not as much as I would like, though. Well, no, but I think it would be perfectly fine to have like a spy thriller Black Widow movie. Absolutely, you don't need you don't need you don't need in extreme superpowers. You don't need to go into space. I mean, you could, but you don't need to. <laughs> well, it'd be kind of hard not to with Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, no, no, yeah. no, I know, but you don't need to have Black Widow going into space. <laughs> I mean, you could. You just not if if that happened. Hey, that's fine. Black Widow in space. Let's, that's fine. It's Moonraker. Go full Moonraker. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say it's Moonraker. <laughs> as long as Jaws is in it, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anything I, else we want to say about uh, Wonder Woman aside from Yay? <laughs> I just, the way she was portrayed was just really strong all around. Uh, I did like the scene on the boat with her and Steve talking about sleeping together. <laughs> and uh, just the way she was like, yeah, I know what 
guys and girls do. It's I'm not stupid. <laughs> I read a book. <laughs> it's just that they usually put in in this kind of movie or in like similar stories where it's a woman who's never really been exposed to men before. They always kind of go the um, naive route. Right. Like they don't understand what like sex is or anything like that. They kind of go in that route. And this refreshingly did not go there. It's like, yeah, I, I know what that is. I don't. We, and it's not necessary. I don't need it. <laughs> So, I don't know. I just thought that was pretty entertaining and refreshing. So, And a little bit of trivia. Stop me if you already know this, but you've seen The Princess Bride, right? Uh, yes. The actress who plays Princess Buttercup. Uh-huh. Wayfish. You just want to reach out and protect her, Princess Buttercup. Sure. Was General Antipi. A- An- An- Antiope. 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 Eh? Okay, she, that's she was General Antiope. Okay, <laughs> so that's why people have been going kind of crazy about her. How freaking cool that's, is that? That's pretty neat. <laughs> I actually didn't, I didn't catch that necessarily, but yeah, that I guess that would make sense. Okay, yeah, she's awesome too. Shame she had to die. Yeah, well. And Leah was telling me that apparently all of the Am- actresses who played the Amazons received the same training as the actors in 300 did. Mm-hmm. And then received the horseback training. Uh, yeah. So that explains why they are so freaking ripped and awesome looking. <laughs> well, plus they were also like stunt women and like actual wrestlers and MMA fighters and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. they actually they have fighting experience, too. So it wasn't just. It wasn't just a straight up like, oh, we'll train you. It's like, oh, these these women already know how to be awesome and badass. But, you know, they just <laughs> gave them a little bit extra, a little bit, a little bit of push to make them even more, more awesome. So Wonder Woman 2, we need an extended flashback with Etta Candy, and then something attacks the mascara and get its collective butt thoroughly whooped. <laughs> I'm just, because... but, yeah. Come on. Because now I'm wondering what happens to Diana between this movie and modern day. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't seem like she's around in modern day. Like, I don't know. It seems like I didn't see Man of Steel, but it seems like from what I understand, Superman was like the first superhero that people knew. Mm -hmm. So was Wonder Woman just like undercover for nearly a hundred years or <laughs> I think that maybe Superman implied that she started being a little more clandestine in her operations, but that's kind of weird. Cause she doesn't seem like the type, but I don't know. Maybe they'll answer it at some point or maybe they won't. Well, yeah, I don't, we don't know. Depends on which direction they go in, but honestly, I kind of want to see justice league now just to see more of her. But <laughs> that would be like the only reason I think, because I'm I'm still not <laughs> sold on that movie necessarily. I'm still I'm still a little wary of DC's future future things, but this has definitely uh, made me a little bit more open to going, giving them more of a chance. Because I was going to be like, if this if Wonder Woman is bad, I wasn't even going to be. I was me like, nope, I'm done with DC, but. Right. This gives me hope that they can go somewhere with it. So, and uh, I'm I don't have anything else to add. If you, no, if I you think do. I think we've pretty much covered it. It's good. Go see it. Yes, go after we're done, <laughs> 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 or go watch it now and then come back and listen to the rest of the show because we got exactly. some good That's... things. We got good things. What good things have we got? We got Q and A. That's right, we have the Q&A portion of the Bumblecast, where you ask your questions and we will answer them. Folks over at patreon.com backslash Bumblecast can buy their way to the front of the line with priority Q&A, or you can just ask it and we'll get to it eventually. 
how do you ask us? I'm so glad you asked. This this part doesn't count as the Q and A. Uh, you can <laughs> tweet it to us at Ian Flynn BKC or at Kyle JCRB with the hashtag Bumblecast. Please include the hashtag. It lets us track it down a whole lot easier. Yes. You can ask it to our email, bumblecast at yahoo.com, or in the comment in the comments section of the Patreon page. Yes. I will see it there. Uh also come on, where's your priority questions, folks? <laughs> we are we are uh we don't have many priority questions lately, so we I'm making an appeal to you guys to ask more questions. We we need we have we have more answers potentially. We just need the questions. So if you're pay, if you're if you're paying regular Q and A stock is starting to run low, so just throw it at us. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Although I looked at the Twitter earlier, I think we've got quite a few more, so I think we're okay for a little bit. But hey, keep throwing them our way, and we'll answer them eventually. But never hurts to have a backlog. Yes, definitely. All right, let's get into the questions from the priority Q and A from our uh, lovely supporters over on Patreon. This first one comes from Chris A. Has the new continuity of Archie Sonic saved it or destroyed it? I mean, a lot of people <laughs> dislike and hate the new continuity. Uh-huh. And a <laughs> lot of people hated the old continuity, too. It all depends on where you're going <laughs> online. Sure. Um, I wouldn't say it saved or destroyed. It was kind of a bump in the road, but overall... I didn't see a huge change in readership. The biggest change was perhaps the complaints that were coming in, but that's just the matter of whatever storyline's going at the time. <laughs> the complaints that were coming in, as in, oh, the complaints just changed. They were right. They Instead were still com- being... they were still complaints. They were just about different things. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that they greatly prefer the new continuity. Hello. And, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I just said hello as <laughs> someone who greatly prefers the new continuity. No. <laughs> there are character there are char- <laughs> there are characters I miss, but overall. <laughs> Most of the folks I've seen who were disappointed with the change is more because they wanted to see closure sure. to the old continuity rather than the just sudden shift, and I can understand that. That was out of my control. To be fair, uh, it's an ongoing comic, so you were never really going to get full closure on every single thing anyway. Well, no, it's always going to be open-ended. But right. I, if I had had the option, I certainly would have liked to have tied up some loose ends. But sure. You know, I would also love to be independently wealthy, maybe a couple inches taller, have <laughs> a nose job maybe, bigger house, a dog would be nice. So Santa, while you're listening... Uh, but <laughs> no, it, it did not save or destroy anything. It, it was what it was. Sure. And just like Sonic, you know, he keeps on rolling. Maybe and... take a hit, maybe drop some rings, but keep moving forward. And yeah, I mean, you just got to realize that the new continuity is what it is. The old stuff, you're probably not going to see it ever again. So I guess Maybe just accept it or move on. I don't know. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> and that's that's with any kind of loss, really, if we want to get metaphysical. But this is the Sonic fandom. Oh, no sure. incarnation it's, of it's, Sonic is truly dead. The fans will keep I, it alive in their hearts. I, well, sure, that's fine. And through their fan production. So. Well, sure. Yeah, there's been plenty of comics that are still in the old continuity fan comics and stuff that I've seen. That are people still telling stories in that universe. So, yeah, maybe check out some of those if you want to go. If you want to, uh, if you still want to be in the old continuity, even though it's not official, you know, there's still some stuff out there. All right, so let's get into the standard Q and A. This one comes from WHS Mugs. On the latest Bumblecast, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought Avalon was a proxy to the British Isles, while Yorish equals EU. Uh, I can understand the confusion, and I really wish I had been able to flesh it out sooner. Avalon is closer to the EU. 
in terms of it is a kind of blanket nation conglomerate of various territories and sovereign locations. Yorish is the equivalent to Europe, the continent. Okay. That's an interesting distinction. I was just wondering if there was more to that. or Oh, there's tons more, but I don't want to get into it and spoil everything. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, there's tons more, but that would be spoilers, so. Okay, fine. We're not into a spoiler-free territory with that just yet. Fine, fine. All right, next one comes from Sonic Blue Ranger. Now that you've dipped your toe into TV writing, are there any shows in particular you'd like to try your hand at? Um, nothing immediately springs to mind, mostly because I don't have a lot of time to watch TV anyway. Um, That's fine, just make up a show. I'm sure it's <laughs> at this point it exists, so... I mean, part of me would love to pitch a story within the Steven Universe universe. But that is very much creator owned and controlled, so there's not really room for me there. So maybe I'll just do my own thing at some point, you know? See if I can't break into the biz there. <laughs> sure. I mean I do How hard can it be? <laughs> I do I I, I, I do Oof. I do know some of the composers on Steven Universe. Really? Sure. You need if you need an in, let me know and I might be able to but I know to, one of the to, producers. To, to so, full strength. You know. Oh, well, well, fine. Let's just one up each other on humble bragging then. <laughs> fine. Fine. <laughs> you you have more you know more people than I do, so we'll just say that. <laughs> and this last question. <clears throat> this question is for Kyle and comes from Rika. 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 Recently, I watched a documentary called Planet Parrot, which claimed there live some rosy-faced lovebirds, which are parrots apparently. They're either descendants of the released or escaped pets, or former pets themselves, since they're not really native birds to America, in Arizona. At least around Phoenix, if I got that right. Have you seen any wild, quote-unquote, parrots around where you've been? Some parrots tend to fly pretty f- far after food at least if they need to and at least the documentary gave me the kind of impression so i got the courage to ask you about it in short have you seen any rosy faced lovebirds uh i think i have seen them in a zoo but i've never seen them in in the wild Um, are you sure it was a zoo and not just a bunch of birds that flew into an enclosure to hang out yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a zoo. They made me pay to get in, so okay, it might have been a zoo. It might have just been someone <laughs> charging people on the side of the road. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, now, I've never seen them in the wild, but I'm looking at them. They're really, really pretty birds. So, but uh, yeah, I guess they got released here by some pet and or by some owner, pet owner. And actually managed to thrive. So they've been here since the mid 80s. And there are quite a few of them in the area. And uh, yeah, they are around here. I've never personally seen them or at least been able to identify that they are what (laughs) they are. That they're like parrots. But they definitely look like parrots. So I'll have to keep an eye out and see if I see them out in the wild anywhere. But... Their markings are cool. They got some nice. They got the rosy, the rosy face. It's like it's a peach colored face, and then they're green. They got green plumage, and a little bit of uh, a blue, blue on their tail. So I'll have to keep an eye out. But I'll have to, I'll have to let you know if I see any. I'll let you know. Maybe I'll take a picture or something if I can get to them. But I guess they're originally from Africa, and they got brought over here. So I guess it kind of makes sense if they're. From they're from dry wooded country in southwestern Africa, so it's uh, according to this site I'm reading here. So it's probably a very similar climate to what we have here, maybe a little cooler, but otherwise, yeah, it makes sense. Life uh, uh finds a way. <laughs> indeed, indeed, it does. So 
that's going to do it for the Q and A on this episode of the Bumblecast, and it's also going to do it for this episode of the Bumblecast. Any shout outs you want to do here at the end of the show? Let's have a shout out to all our awesome patrons at patreon.com slash bumblecast. They capital idea, sir. This goes out to all the people who make this show possible week to week. Big thanks to Daniel H, Zephyr Flame, Chris A, Demo, John B, Sam Cybercat, Mike B, Connell T, Samuel P, Justin G, Jennifer R, Diane W, Chavel S, Dawn B, Clinton H, congratulations again, Andrew F, Frobman, Ken Delicious Cartoons, John M, S. Yavarovich 9X, Alex B, and James K. Ah, I do like how that list is getting longer. It is a good list. It's very nice. It's very nice. If it gets 30 people longer, we're going to get a special new remix of the Bumblecast tune by the T-Lopes of Sonic Mania. He's a very famous person. You might have heard of him. Need to pledge much, just a dollar. Come on, people. I want that music. <laughs> we need him. We need him now. We need all the T-Lopes. We need him on the show. Let's do that. <laughs> Hey, I mean, we if we can reach a certain percentage, we will have guests on the show. So yes, we get more guests. We we need we need guests. Poke and prod. We cool, anyway, we need cool people. We can do that. We can do cool people. It's, it'd be something different for this show. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh yeah, oh come on, our patrons, the patron guests we've had have been cool. Okay, okay, you win there. You win. Yes, you win. The, they're cool. They're very cool. Anyway, go ahead, Ian. <laughs> If you're wondering what I'm up to, head over to BumbleKing.com or check me out on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. And you can find me at KyleJCRB on Twitter or at KNGI.org where you can find archived MP3 downloads of these episodes of this show and many others, including my uh, regular weekly video game music remix spotlight show called Nitro Game Injection. It streams live every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on 8 YouTube, and Facebook Live. If you want to listen on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash kylejcrb. And on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash kngi network. That's going to wrap it up for Bumblecast episode 45. We hope to see you this Friday for Bumblecast Gaming Live. And we'll see you in a couple weeks for Bumblecast episode number 46. Oh, yay! Oh, yeah. That was really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now you're just showing off. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everybody! Uh, Ian, you want to read this one? Because it's for me. Uh, I would, but you didn't send me the show notes. Uh, well, did you check the Google Drive? Uh, no. Why would I do that? I don't... Oh. Okay. I told you the show notes were there. Did you? Yes. Did you really? Did you tell me five minutes ago? Because my goldfish brain can't hold on to more than that. Okay, I can't... I I understand. I I can understand that. I can't hold on to things very long either, so... But yeah, I told you on Facebook. (laughs) Shh. It says show notes are up. I typed it right there. <laughs> Load faster. This is embarrassing. <laughs> it's a good thing we have editing to help us if I feel like it. Maybe I'll just leave this in <laughs> as is. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bumblecast. If you like the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting us on Patreon. We have some great rewards as well as big plans to make the show even better. Also, rate and review the show on iTunes. It gets more folks listening and really helps us out, so we definitely appreciate it. Original music by Ken Coda Snyder, used with permission. Find more of his music at bc.s3m.us and find the theme song at noisechanradio.bandcamp.com. Available as a pay-what-you-want download.
something you need to look up is somebody swapped the models for new Super Mario Brothers on the Wii and replaced Mario with Bowser and vice versa. Oh no. So the very end gauntlet is a high pitched Bowser jumping away from a 40 foot tall Mario that's smiling as he spits fireballs and rakes his clawed <laughs> hands through brick. It's pretty surreal. Does it have the, did they use the the bone structure of the original characters? Like when they do character swaps in Smash Brothers, so you get some really truly hideous uh hideously weird creations. I guess that's what it is, but here's the thing, everything matched up pretty well. Okay. There weren't any broken seams, there weren't any odd poses. It worked pretty well. <laughs> so it wasn't like Luigi with the proportions of Bayonetta or anything. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which is no, but it is really funny to see a forty foot tall Mario go <laughs> go stomping through the lava. <laughs> nice. I will have to check that out. That sounds hilarious. That sounds pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm a Mario. I'm a gonna win. Anyway, what's up? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We are recorded. Hmm. Is that what we were doing? Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Hmm. I don't know.